This is Metrosource Minis, the official podcast of Metrosource Magazine and home of short-form interviews with your favorite personalities from the LGBTQ world and beyond. Quick, fun, and informative, it's Metrosource on the go. Out and proud since 1990. Well, hello, hello, hello. This is Metrosource Minis. I'm your host, Alexander Rodriguez, here with uh, Metrosource Minis. Uh, I'm so excited. Today, we are ready to drag out the vote with our guest, Jeremy Carey. Uh, Carey, I'm, I'm rhyming. Jeremy Carey. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Watch out, girls. This bitch is back. Jeremy Carey is an American drag performer, a cosplay artist, actor, and singer who came to international attention as a runner-up on the fourth season of RuPaul's Drag Race as Fifi O'Hara. His cosplay and drag social media series covering... 365 days of drag and 31 days of Harry Potter inspired wizardry have gone viral. And most recently, his first character, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, was posted as, as the start of a new series to draw attention to his current campaign, Drag Out the Vote, uh, which includes the use of drag to engage voters of all strengths of life to sashay their way to the polls. And Jeremy has appeared um, in a number of music videos with other Drag Race alum, as well as a solo artist, appeared on Skin Wars, Andy Cohen's Watch What Happens Live, and is the most adorable feature on Twitch. Please welcome Jeremy Carey. Hi, girl. Um, hi. That's, a, that's an amazing introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I love your whole layout there. Like, you're all set in your little lair. I literally just got, this is my streaming room, but I literally just got done streaming. So, um, yeah. Hi. All right. <laughs> All right. And I love how your hair matches, like, your like Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're going to jump right into it on Metrosource Minis. Um, now, uh, on a, to start off on a serious note, uh, we have taken a few steps back um, in terms of LGBT equality during this current political and social climate. Our youth are going back in the closet. They're dealing with suicide um, issues. They're scared to come out, scared to be themselves. Um, and I know that your coming out wasn't exactly the best. Um, can you share a little bit about your story and offer any advice to our youth or anyone really that's, that's coming out? Um, you know, I have to say, it, I mean, I grew up in Texas, um, in a very, um, religious, um, family and very Republican family as well. So, um, I, I had a girlfriend, not because I didn't want to, I, I am attracted to women, um, or was at the time. And, um, and for me, I, 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 my dad beat me up when he found out I was gay, like all, all this stuff. But I do, I do think it's changed a lot for the good and i think like the younger generation is so um they're so much smarter and they're so much more open and free and i think that's really cool uh, um I, I think the most important part when coming out is that um uh, to make sure you have a safe environment to do so you know what i mean yeah um now i know that you kind of uh you kind of survived on your own you kind of had to make it on yeah. your own um yeah. where did you draw that strength from yeah, <laughs> you gotta live. You know what I mean? Like I was homeless for a while and I um, I used to like, it sounds sad, but it's the truth. I used to like couch surf and like find, I would like date guys, you know what I mean? Um, to just have a place to sleep <laughs> at night. And that's a sad reality with a lot of LGBT youth, you know what I mean? And if, with their families kicking them out of their house. And um, for me, it was just like, um, it, it, I had to live. And so I, I have to make it. Okay, um, let's talk a little drag race. Uh, you have been very vocal about your experience on the show. Do you think <laughs> your experience, a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Do you think your experience was different because you entered the competition as a performer whose character was Fifi O'Hara rather than the other queens whose whole lives were their characters? No, I think, God, this gets sound shady. This gets sound so shady. I think there's people that need the show and um, and it's great because what they do is they, they, they do drag and they do it well. And, and that show is great for showing off their skills, but I do so much more than just drag. And for me, when I got there and, and I probably, because I've I, again, going back to being like a homeless and fighter and everything, like I had to fight for my place on this, on this planet. For me, being in the scene, the setup where everyone tells you what to do and say and who to be, just, I was sick of it. You know what I mean? So I was just like, I'm not doing this. I can't put up with this. The first season, uh, like also, uh, season four was 
it was fun because I love a villain. Who doesn't love a villain on TV? Like, and I like I knew what I was doing. It was so fun, like creating these um, moments of drama and everything with story producers and Sharon. Um, but when All Stars uh, Two came around, I was so sure of who I was, not only as an adult but like as an artist, that I, for someone to tell me like what I was doing was not good because. It, it wasn't to their standards of art. I was done. I was like, I'm not putting up with this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I'm a huge fan of your cosplay. Your Harry Potter work was amazing. Thank you. Um, and then when I when I saw your social media today, uh, what to see Ruthie up there. Oh, yeah. that, look, that looks so on point. Um, you, you also did 365 days of drag. Girl, I can barely put on matching socks. Uh, <laughs> what is your, what is your uh, creative process in creating and implementing a campaign uh, and, and your look? Um, well, each one had a different process. Um, 365, I, we just finished filming All Stars 2. It hasn't even aired yet. And um, Alyssa and I got into our argument and it really like stuck with me because she was like, we'll see who people believe who, cause who has the most followers. And I was like, really? So this is a follower thing. You think because like, I didn't have as many followers at the time that no one's going to believe me. And so, which I, I'm, mm -hmm. and so I was like, what can I do <laughs> with true talent? Not, not a, not a show backing me up to make me a star, but true talent. What could I do? Um, um, and, this is before they even aired All-Stars, even announced the cast. And I was like, you know what? I have a lookbook of stuff that I can't do like on tour. Like the shows on, on tour, it's like they're super fast. You have you have minutes to change. And so I was, and my 365 were like full on elaborate um, body paints and stuff. I was like, what could I do? And so I was like, you know what? How about every day I release a new new look in this book that I doodle in? And then I didn't realize like how, <laughs> how quick a day goes by and like how many looks yeah. I have to do. And it <laughs> added up. And I'm thankful for like, um, A, I, I went to like the vintage shop a lot like the fifth stores to buy shit and then um bianca del rio when she she i happened to get her when she was moving i live in new york so when she was moving from new york to la she was clearing out like all her drags so she gave me like bags and bags and bags of shit that i used for um 365 days of drag and then harry potter i was like all right i'm not gonna do another photo series of 365 but what like, like 365 photos but what photo series could i do and elevate it from the last time i did it and i so i did um the harry potter series with like insane um, prosthetics and um, costuming and makeup transformations. And I, that time I switched it up with gender and I did, whether it was a male or female presenting or a gremlin uh, <laughs> a monster, um, I did that. And then now with this one, um, the trailblazing women, it's not just me, it's women from around the world now. I did like maybe four or five transformations, I believe, maybe four. And, um, but this time we're shining light on um, women around the world. Uh, it's it's r remarkable and it really really shows off so much of of your creative aspect um, in your whole personality. You have so many different creative uh, traits, and, and I want to talk about drag out the vote, inspiring the LGBT community to get out and vote. Surprising fact: one out of five members of our community are not registered to vote. And yeah. I was like, what, 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 what? Yeah, same, um, same reaction, same reaction. <laughs> no, no. Why, why do you think that is? I think that, like, um, especially with youth, I think there's just a lot more issues that um, that they're focused on at the moment than than voting. Um, again, it goes back to me, like, being homeless and, you know, finding a couch to sleep on. I think, like, a, a, especially with youth, they're trying to figure out who they are navigating through that, and, and which is important, just trying to survive rather than yeah. voting for them. But now it's essential you need to vote to survive. And this election is, is, is super important, especially for our rights, because they're slowly being stripped away. And um, I remember um, uh, when uh, Donald Trump was elected president, I remember just the fear of not knowing what he, um, his administration would do. And I was engaged at the time and out of, out, of, out of fear, my husband and I just went straight to the courthouse to get married. We didn't have our dream wedding that we wanted. Um, we just went to the courthouse just so if anything happened, maybe we'd be grandfathered in you know, to, to some program, yeah. which is sad. To, like, that's sad to think. I shouldn't have to think like that. So I just think that um, I, I'd like to thank um, the, the administration for um, opening our eyes to a lot of politics and wanting us, uh, pushing us to uh, care more, which I will say that. <laughs> that's for sure. Well, and I think if there is any good, it's that we have been challenged as a community yeah. um, and other minority groups socially and politically. So we, we're now having to fight. And this younger generation um, is going to have more of a respect of how our our gay rights started in, in the first place. Well, and I think it's so cool because they 
like I said, they're so free and open and brave. And like, I, they know the power that they have. Like, and it's so cool to see. And now I feel old saying this. Like, <laughs> I, I, I really feel old, but I'm so proud of like, especially my younger fans and following that that I see going out there and marching in the streets or raising money or be, uh, being a new drag ambassador now for this uh, new program with Dragon. Mm-hmm. I think it's so cool. Now, um, how can we, as your fans, support Drag Out the Vote? Well, um, a simple, well, simple follow. You guys can follow them on every social media. That's that's super easy. But um, a lot of people think like, oh, I don't have any money. I can't give or donate. And um, a lot of people, especially with this pandemic, that is a very common thing. Um, a lot of us lost our jobs. And so... Um, uh, sim- you never know the power of a retweet or sharing information. And the cool thing that Jackie Huba, the creator of uh, Drag Out the Vote, um, and I have talked about is that it is so important with social media. It's so easy to retweet something and not do your research on it. And with Drag Out the Vote, they're putting out accurate, important information that needs to be shared. And it costs zero. And, and mo- everybody's on their phone. Everybody is, uh, is checking yeah. stuff constantly. It, it takes zero effort to um, retweet something and share something. You never know who's going to see it in the power of a tweet. So, All right. Um, I want you to give me a little relationship advice because you have been in a relationship for quite a number of years. Um, yes. as, you, as you mentioned, you were married. Wah, wah. Sorry, single boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> what relationship advice do you have? I can't even get a date. I, you know, so I was joking about it because I'm, I'm always on tour prior to the pandemic. And so yeah. um, my husband and I really never saw each other. And um, it was like in passing. And so it gave us like that chance to miss each other, you know, and, and then yeah. we come home. And then now it's every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, but it's been it's been great, and um, we argue. That's part of it. I think a lot of people think that, um, especially, and I had this mentality. You argue, and people are like, "Oh, it's not going to work. We're done." No arguments happen, and 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 that's I think, they, yeah, they they need to happen so you can learn and grow from that. And um, and I think it's just you have to be secure in, in, in your relationship. Like my husband and I are super secure. We we know who we are. We know at the end that we're coming home to each other. And, and maybe that comes with age and everything, but it sounds so cheesy and it's so cliche. It really truly is. But when it happens and you meet that person, you truly will know. And it's like, I met him in the club out of all pla- a hopeless place, as Rihanna says. And um, <laughs> we, um, it was like instant. Like I was like, uh, like I'm going to marry him. And it's so funny because I used to laugh at like, you know, you watch these couples and they're like, I just looked across the room and saw and knew. And I was like, okay, but it's so yeah. true. It's, and it will happen. So. How dare you, sir? <laughs> you are so lucky. <laughs> but it's funny because being home stuck with somebody, you're like, I didn't realize he was a mouth breather. <laughs> I, oh, well, okay. I will say this. So there's been, my husband does snore like, Oh my God. And um, <laughs> I, cause I haven't really been home to experience it. And so um, now sometimes like if I do not go to bed before he falls asleep, I will go like lay in like the living room and fall asleep. Cause it is so loud. I cannot, he's gonna get mad at yeah. me for sharing this, <laughs> but it's true. It's, true. it's more loud. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's play a little rapid fire before we go. Are you ready? Let's hear it. Okay. Uh, biggest onstage mishap. Oh, I fell on um, Sage at Mickey's in Hollywood and then Perez Hilton put it on his website. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah. hit miss. Okay. A uh, celebrity you would want to give a cosplay makeover to? Ooh, um, Angelina Jolie. Ooh, that would be fabulous. Um, yeah. What is a challenge that you would add to Drag Race? I have said this for a bazillion years that they drag race queens go on the road so much and they have to go from place to place to place, sometimes straight from the airport to the gig. And yeah. I think it'd be so cool for their first time meeting each other. The moment that they get off that plane, that they have to get in, um, in makeup mm. in the car and go to set. And that's how they're introduced. Oh, that's a really good challenge. Like almost like yeah. amazing race. And yeah. it really does yeah. challenge you on like car drag. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, <laughs> strangest fan request or comment. Oh Thank my God, uh, <laughs> I get them daily. Um, I, I will say this one time though, um, I wanna say it was, in, it was in Ohio or Indiana, one of those. And um, they, the promoter gave out where I was staying 
and my hotel oh my room number. Yeah, and they went to my room and they were on like five dollar bills. Which how dare you? Um, it should be like a twenty or something <laughs> more. But give me a honey. Right? They were like literally writing on messages like, "Please come out and see me," and then they'd slide under the door. And oh, then I would answer. And then away. We had to call security and then switch my rooms. But yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> oh my god! I'd be like, yeah. send pics, slide a pic <laughs> under. <girl." laughs> yeah. Not just the torso. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeremy. <laughs> What's the strangest thing or uh, the shadiest thing you've seen backstage at a drag show that, that you've seen happen? I've I've never seen anything shady, to be honest. You mean I, we see fights and cat fights, but as far as like breaking up glass and sticking it up and shit, I've yeah. never seen like anything shady. Because you know what it is. I, I grow up in Texas, like bitches. If they have got if they got something to say, they'll say it to you right then and there. <laughs> and so oh, yeah, yeah we, we handle <laughs> shit. So like yeah, there really wasn't anything crazy now. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, tell all of our audience uh, where you want them to find and follow you. So um, I'm on um, all of my social medias as I'm um, under uh, Fifi O'Hara still until they let, I can't change it because I'm a verified account. And so um, yeah, I forget it. Yeah. So yeah. On, on Instagram, it is um, at Fifi O'Hara still, but on my Twitter, um, it's at just Jeremy. So you can find me there. J-U-S-T. Very <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. It's yeah. been such a pleasure talking to you. You can also read a little bit more of our interview in Metrosource uh, magazine at metrosource.com uh, and drag out the vote. Everybody get out, get yeah. out and help. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This has been my chat with Jeremy Carey and that's our episode. I am your host and lead writer for Metrosource, Alexander Rodriguez. You can follow me at uh, or on Instagram at Alexander is on air and you can binge listen to all of our episodes featuring your favorite celebrities from our issues. Until next time, stay true. Stay you, boo. That has been another Metrosource Mini. Like, share, and subscribe on your favorite podcast player and check out the latest issue of Metrosource Magazine on newsstands or online at metrosource.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram at Metrosource, and on Twitter at Metrosource Mag. Until next time, stay fabulous.